we thank God for this opportunity to come together again and study his word. Uh, he has blessed us this week and brought us to this point in our journey. Uh, so we give him thanks for that. Uh, we serve an awesome God and we have breath this morning. So let everything that have breath praise his name. So praise him this morning. Uh, the subject of our lesson today is the joy of worship, and we'll be looking at uh, Psalm 84 uh, in its entirety. Uh, so if you got your Bible or your Sunday school, Sunday school book open, uh, that's what we'll be focusing. And our aim for change is by the end of this lesson, we will discover why the psalmist expressed joy in worship, feel the joy of worship, and proclaim the living presence of God throughout creation. Uh, we have four outlines here, uh, the tabernacle of worship the valley of Baca, reverential worship, and joy in worship. Uh, so we're going to uh, pray, and then we will ask God's direction, and the Spirit leads us, and, and, and get into his word. So, Father God, we thank you for who you are, the God, our creator, our sustainer, the God, uh, your son Jesus, our Savior. Lord, we just thank you today uh, because you saved us, you love us, dear God, and that you give us this opportunity uh, to come right now into your presence, dear God. So we pray that your Holy Spirit lead and guide us through your word, uh, that we might rightly divide your word of truth, dear God, because we just want to be better servants for you. We want to know more about you, dear God. We want to walk closer with you, uh, not for our own benefit, but that we might bring glory to you and others might see the good work that you're doing through us and bring glory to you, dear God, and that they might be drawn to you and be saved today, dear God. So we're praying for those that don't know you today, uh, that they would give their life to you today, dear God, and put their trust in you and help us to continue to walk in faith and walk in that trust, dear God. So we love you today and we thank you. And it's in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The joy of worship. In anything that we find joy in, we love to do, uh, right? Uh, anything that brings you joy, you just can't wait to do it again. If you go on a vacation and you really enjoyed yourself, you can't wait to go back to that place again. Uh, well, that's what we're going to find uh, with the psalmist here. It's said that the psalm was written by the sons of Korah uh, around describing a love for being in the presence of God. And if you want to know more about the sons of Korah, uh, you can read Numbers 16. Or, or Numbers 26, 9 through 11. Uh, they give you um, some background on them. We won't go in that today, uh, but the sons are the writer uh, of this particular Psalm 84. And what we're going to find is uh, that they're longing to be in the presence of God. It's sort of like uh, with us. Uh, worship is important. Now, we know that we are the temple and the Spirit of God lives within us. And we know that we are the church, but we're looking at Old Testament before Christ. Um, and so you find that we know that the temple was the place of worship, uh, the place that they went to meet God, what God's presence was. Uh, but it's still important to us today to have a place of worship. And that's why uh, you see us in church on, on Sunday mornings or whatever day you choose uh, to be in worship, because we like to, uh, the scriptures reminds us to assemble uh, with one another. And, and sometimes we need that because the world can dominate um, our senses. You know, we just become so consumed with the world that we need a specific place of worship or a specific time of worship because um, it's, it's very important uh, because once we get overwhelmed with those things, sometimes we forget about uh, being in God's presence. We find ourselves just always in the presence of worldly things. And, and it reminds us that, you know, we need worship in the time of blessings. Uh, otherwise, we might be fooled into thinking that we don't need the Lord or when things are going well for us. And it also reminds us that uh, the Lord is with us in our griefs and our times of spiritual dryness. You know, he used those troubles uh, of this present evil age to remind us that uh, this is not our true home. And, and just reminds us how much we need him. And, and the psalmist, uh, we're going to see, uh, understood that. So he's going to point out some of those things about true, about the joy of worship. And as we've been going through this uh, pandemic and when we were not able to assemble together, 
I know a lot of you were longing for the day that you could be back in the house of worship. And, and, and once you got back in there, it was just great joy. It wasn't that you were not worshiping the Lord because you were not in the building, but it was to still the assembly together and, and worship together. Uh, it brought great joy, not because of the building, but because we were together in the presence of the Lord. And as the psalm is going to point out, being in the presence of the living God. Uh, and that's why we that's why we meet. Uh, so let's get into the scripture and we'll start and we'll look at verses one through four first and get an idea of why the psalmist longed so much to be in the presence of God and how he hungered so much uh, to to worship with him. Uh, so Psalm 84, one through four reads, how amiable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. Yea, the sparrow hath found an house and a swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even on altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are they that dwell in thy house. They will be still praising thee, Salah. So it opens up with the psalmist saying that you know, how he hungers uh, to be back in the tabernacle of God. He starts out by saying, you know, how beautiful, or how friendly are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. And he recognized who God is, the host of, of, of the army of the Lord. And, and he says, my soul longeth, uh, yea, even fainteth for your courts of the Lord. He desire to be in his presence so much that it, it seemed to cause him to come to a point that he would almost faint uh, to be in the presence of the Lord. Um, his whole being, he said, his heart and his flesh was crying out for the living God. Uh, so he wasn't saying that this place was beautiful or, or friendly or pleasant because of the building itself, but because of the presence of the living God. And he made that point that he was crying out for the living God, not uh, not some statue, uh, not some idol that couldn't speak or couldn't do anything for him. But he said he, his whole being was crying out for the living God. So he was coming to this place because he wanted to be in the presence of the living God. And, and I'm reminded when I come into the house of worship, what am I coming for? Am I coming to be in the presence of the pastor, or presence of the choir, presence of the of the of the pews, you know, or am I coming to be in the presence of the living God? And I think if if I'm doing that, that brings me joy because that's how we must come. We can't come for all those other things, but we come first and foremost to be in the presence of the living God. And yes, his presence is always with us. But what we're pointing out here is that we're focusing on worship in a specific place. Uh, we know that, again, that we are the walking temple. But we're understanding that when we come into the house of worship, we're saying we're setting aside the specific time, the specific place to be in the presence of God together. And that's what brought the psalmist joy. That's what had him longing to be back there. It wasn't so much about the building, but the presence of the living God. And what would that do for us if we come in or if I come in every Sunday, I come in that building that my primary focus, because I believe all those other things will take care of itself. If I come in with my primary focus on being in the presence of the living God. And so he goes on to say in verses three and four of how you can find satisfaction in the presence of the living God or joy. That's where the joy of worship come by being in his presence. Because verse three reminds us, he said, yea, the sparrow hath found a house and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. And what he's saying is, um, even the sparrows, he's using this analogy, even the sparrow uh, has found a place in their house. Uh, even the swallow has found a place uh, to lay her young. And so what he's reminding us of this, uh, even as insignificant as the sparrow might be to some, uh, and even as restless as you see a sparrow just continually finding, flying around, he's saying even the insignificant and 
uh, those restless folks can find rest and find peace and find a place in the presence of God. And that's why he said, I know you can do it, O oh God, my king, because of who you are. So no matter what position you might feel you are in life today, uh, you can still find rest in the presence of God. Uh, and his presence, if you know him and been saved, that presence is within you now. And if you hadn't been saved and given your life, you can do that today. Uh, so he goes on to remind us that blessed are they that dwell in their house. They will be still praising these Salah. So he's saying that if he was in our position, that blessed are they that dwell in the house. When his spirit dwells in us, he said we still be praising now. He said we continually praise. If he could just be with a sparrow and a swallow were, you know, near thine altar, in their house, continual praise would be coming out of his mouth. So that speaks a lot to us, reminds us that we should be that way, continually uh, praising the Lord, you know, continually uh, giving him thanks. Because if he takes care of the sparrow and the swallow, how much more will he take care of us? So never think that you're so insignificant or things are so bad that you can't be in the presence of God because he is your king. He is the Lord of hosts and you can find rest in him. And then he goes on to remind us. So just remember verse four, blessed are they that dwell in the house. They will be still praising thee. So we can't find a reason not to praise because he's within us. And the psalmist says again, if he had that opportunity, they will, they will still be praising. So let's continue to praise, continue to find joy in worship. And verses, we'll get into verse uh, five through seven now. And he says, bless is the man whose strength is in thee and whose heart are the ways of them who passing through the valley of Baca make it well. The rain also filleth the pools that go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Now, what he's telling us here is still finding joy in worship. One, he says, blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. His strength is not in the world. His strength is not in himself, but his strength is in the Lord of hosts. And when our strength is in him, we can face anything that comes up against us. And that's what he's reminding us. In whose heart are the way of them. His strength is in the Lord. And because his strength is in the Lord, he doesn't need a road map to the presence of the Lord. He's been there before and he knows how to get there. And it's through the strength of the Lord. Why is he saying that? Because he goes on to say, who passing through the valley of Baca, make it well. The rain also filleth the pool. And it says that the valley of Baca is a reference to dryness or, or tears or pain or, or discomfort or any challenges that you might be going through. But he says, who passes through the valley of Baca, make it well. How do they make it, make it a well? Because their strength is in the Lord. Then it goes on to say, the rain also filleth the pools. How the pools fill? Because their strength is in the Lord. The Lord specializes, is, is, is springing up roots in dry places. So it doesn't matter what you're facing today. If your strength is in the Lord, he can turn that dryness and make it a well. They did it because their strength was in the Lord. You can do it if your strength is in the Lord. You see, the good life is not about having everything you wanted. It's about having God even in the midst of nothing you wanted. No one wants to be in a dry place. No one wants to go through tough times, but we have to. That's just part of being on this Christian journey. But the problem is sometimes when we get in the Valley of Baca is the place that we want to give up and not worship at all. But what he's saying is because his strength is in thee, 
and whose heart are the ways of them, who, whose heart knows the way because he's been led uh, by the Lord of hosts. So when I'm passing through bad times, he used those bad experiences to grow me, to strengthen us. And what it says is, you know how when you're going through tough times, it seems sometimes you go, sometimes you go from strength to weakness, weakness to strength. But he's saying that if you know that your strength is in him, and this is what the word is saying. Now, he said they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeared before God. So he's saying, if your strength is in the Lord, when you're weak, you don't have to worry about it because he's moving you from strength to strength. So in those dry places, he's making wells. He's using rain to fill the pools. So in your darkest hour, he's still taking you from strength to strength when your strength is in him. And that's what we pray for, that God, that we can just move from strength to strength. We know times are hard and we hurt, but we can move from strength to strength because we trust in him. And that's how we find joy and worship. That's why he longed to get back to that place, because I don't know where the writer was at this time or even what they were facing. Uh, but I do know this. He had a longing to be back in the presence of God. And that's what we should long for daily on our daily walk. Lord God, just to be in your presence. That's where we'll find peace and joy. And that's how we have joy in worship. So he says in, in that, that we'll go from strength to strength in every one of them in Zion that appeared before God. Because that was their journey home. They knew where they were going. And it's the same way with us. We have to understand that we're just pilgrims here. This is not our home. Uh, we have a better place. Uh, that's truly going to be joy daily when we're uh, forever in his presence. Um, so he, they knew this. So we can understand what the psalmist is, is saying and seeing here. So he's excited and just thinking on the joy of worship. And if you've been out of worship for a while, just think about the times you've been in worship and the time that you are in the presence of, of God and the peace and joy that you felt felt and it should be a longing inside of you to have that joy and feel that joy again and it's something that we can have because the psalmist is showing us how to get it where the large strength of where the gain strength where to put our trust and that's in the lord so in verses eight through nine uh he prays uh uh, for his for his king for his leader he says O lord god of hosts hear my prayer give ear O god of jacob behold O god our seal and look upon the face of thine anointed uh, so at that time you know that um, david could have possibly been the king at that point but at any rate he was praying because at that time the anointed ones were the king and they was the one that looked after the the children of Israel. So he was praying. But in our time, we know who the new anointed one is, and that's Christ himself. And, and God does look on him. And by him looking on him, we don't get what we deserve. So we thank God for that, uh, for uh, our anointed one, our king, our savior. Uh, but And we should always be praying to him uh, for help, uh, for protection. And, and that continued understanding and knowing that uh, that you're protected and that he's looking upon you with grace and mercy should bring great joy in your life and should lead us to having joy in worship so now when we look at uh, verses uh, 10 through 12 uh, the outline on that says joy in worship and this how much joy or desire like he said that that his whole heart and flesh wanted to be in the presence of God because verse 10 says this for a day in thy courts is better than a thousand so he is saying one day in your presence is better than a thousand days doing something else doing what I want to do one day would you trade one day in his presence for a thousand years on this earth no, you would not, because you know in your eyes is set on eternity. But he says in this moment, for one day in that courts 
is better than a thousand. And he said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. I'd rather stand on my feet and open doors and guard gates in your courts, in your presence, than to go and enjoy the world, the tents of wickedness, doing things that don't bring glory to God. That's what he's saying. I would rather be in worship than to be doing my own thing. I would rather be in your presence than to be doing my own thing. Uh, so that's important uh, to us today. As, he, as Deuteronomy reminds us, teach us to number our days. Uh, so take every day to be in the presence of God. And he goes on to say in verses 11 and 12, for the Lord God is a sun and shield the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. And we know this promise to be true because he didn't withhold any good thing. He gave us his best thing. And that's his son, Jesus Christ. And what did he do? Every bad thing that we deserve. And that's death. He put on his son who took it to Calvary's cross for us so that we might receive grace and stand in his glory so he did not withhold any good thing and that good thing is available for those that walk uprightly who accept him as your savior and then verse 12 reminds us O lord of hosts blessed is the man that trusteth in thee do you trust in him today Blessed are you if you do. Joy is in you when you do. And I pray that we all do that. I pray that today that we'll continue to long to be in the house of worship. Uh, if you're still going through this pandemic and you're not assembling together, I pray that that day will come. But until that day does come, uh, you can still have joy in worship because you can worship in his presence wherever you are. But long for that day that you can assemble again together. I'm thankful for the opportunity that we have to assemble together. And I want to come with great joy and focus on meeting with the living God. So today, I pray that when you walk into whatever house of worship or whatever day you walk in, that you walk in with your focus on meeting with the living God, the one that sent his son to save us that we find joy in his presence today. We thank God for this opportunity. Uh, we thank God for you. We pray that you'll be blessed this week. Uh, we pray that you have an opportunity that you'll join with us in worship at 930. But if not, um, you can see us on Facebook or YouTube. But I just pray today that together that we hunger and desire and are thirsty for the word of God and for the presence of God and for the joy of worship. Father God, we thank you right now for who you are and remind us that our strength lies in you and that's joy in worship, that if you see about the sparrow and the swallow, uh, that you definitely care about us, dear God. So we thank you for loving us uh, and we'll find joy in worshiping you today and just joy in being in your presence. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray, amen. St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.